Adidas Soul Cord Boost Teardown. Here we go. And heads up, I was able to get my hands on Serena Williams actual custom Nike flares. We are gonna be tearing these down and comparing them to the stock Nike flares. So you can see what the difference is between the pros custom shoes are and the shoes that you and I buy off the shelf. So if you don't wanna miss that video, click the subscribe button and notification bell so you can be notified when this video hits YouTube. And make sure you stay till the end for the outsole and upper durability test, which really made my eyes pop. Now the Soul Court Boost had some of the most interesting engineering that I've seen all year just not in the insole. It may have the Boost logo on it, but it is just simple foam, pretty thin. Now the laces are housed partially in this toe box wrap. Now what this does is it allows the laces not to fray if you slide a lot. It also protects the toe box with a little bit more of a durability wrap, which we'll test later in the video. Also, the nice thing about this extra reinforcement in the toe box is it is physically stitched into the upper. It's not just glued. It is also glued down but I had a really hard time peeling it off. Unlike some other shoes that just peeled off really easily, this really stayed down, which is a great design for this keeping its integrity throughout the life of the shoe. Looking at the upper as a whole, I'm actually not sure how it did so well during the infrared test. My number one guess is, is that air was circulating through the tongue of the shoe. As you can see, the, the tongue is not as substantial as some other shoes, say like the Onyx Eclipsian 3, and frankly, is probably the weakest part of this shoe. Now cutting the shoe open, you also get some outstanding views of the molded heel counter and that ankle collar. It really Really locks your foot in the shoe. You can see just how much padding Adidas puts into the upper to keep your heel and your ankle locked in. Now the Adidas Soul Court Boost does have a slight inflare to the last. It is not as inflared as it looks. That is due to an optical illusion created by the lateral flange. It's so fat and so wide that it actually makes the shoe look like it's kicking in the other way. That's just an optical illusion. And actually these are my favorite shoes for tennis players with chronic ankle sprains, just because of how fat and stable that lateral flange is, it's the best and most stable on the market. Now cutting these in half was a Herculean effort. Typically it takes me about three to five swipes with my knife to get through the midpoint of the shoe where the shank is. On these, it took me two box cutters and my saw to get through the shank, which that's how stiff thick and substantial that shank was. And it's interesting because when you look on the outside, you have the rubber shank, but when you open it up, it's actually just a little thin piece of rubber. And on the inside and in the midsole is where you really see what holds this shoe together. And just looking at how substantial and rigid the shank is, you can really see why these shoes remain so stable, even though the heel and most of the midfoot is filled with that really spongy boost foam. Now the Soul Court Boost has a heel height of 2.4 centimeters, a heel to toe drop of about 1.4 centimeters, and a tread thickness of four millimeters. Now that's actually not as thick as some other shoes that we've torn down this year. But with the combination of the boost foam and then the really dense midsole foam, which we'll see in a minute, plus the super rigid shank in the midsole, and then the outsole rubber shank, which helps create that arch support, you get this combination of support and cushion that is really unparalleled right now in the world of tennis shoes. Now when these shoes are cut in half, medial to lateral, you can really see a ton of boost foam with all those vacuoles of foam here segmented in the heel. And then as you go into the forefoot, you slowly start to get into a more dense foam. Now that's because the ball of your foot takes all that pressure when you're split stepping, bouncing up and down or serving. So you need that more dense foam in the midfoot and in the forefoot. Whereas in the heel, because you got the shank connecting it, you can have that boost foam, which gives you a nice cushion when you land on your heel. Now I think the absolute coolest part of the boost foam and dense foam combination combined with the shank is when you cut the shoe from front to back, you can see right under the shank, when you come up to the lateral flange, you still have all that boost foam, that proprietary foam of Adidas is on the lateral flange. But as you go from lateral to medial, outside to inside, you get a more dense foam. So on the inside of your foot where your arch is, you have that real dense foam holding your arch up. But on the outside of the shoe on the lateral flange, you have the boost foam. Now what that does is, is it allows you when you're going side to side or hitting a wide forehand or a wide backhand, that foam compresses and springs back really well with the real kind of violent motion that actually propels you the other way. Whereas if you're coming down on your arch, 
the shoe stays stable so that you don't bottom out through the shoe. Now coming down into the outsole, getting ready to do our durability test, when I cut the shoe in half, it really brings home the message of how high the tread comes up on the shoe, right? So it, the tread is vertical on the outside of the Adidas Sole Cord Boost. And so anytime you're moving side to side or your shoe is dragging, your foot is kind of sliding, you're gonna get that really nice durability profile of that. Now even on the inside of the shoe when you take it down, you actually still have a lot of reinforced rubber on the outside of the toe box. The only place on this shoe that's exposed is the lateral flange where that boost foam actually might start to fray if you drag the outside lateral side of the shoe. All right, so now for the durability test. On the upper, I first did a durability test on the rubber reinforcement, and then I did a second one where all these little dimples are on the shoe. Because I figured some people do toe drag really far over on their foot, so you'll wanna get a durability test on this dimple profile as well as just on the rubber. Now, on the rubber, 10 seconds, highest grit sandpaper, we had one millimeter of damage, that was it. Just as good as any of the best uppers we've seen this year. Now, what really surprised me was the durability test on just the dimple area and the fabric. The Dremel didn't even get through the dimples. That's how solid this reinforced upper is. So if you're looking for a shoe with maximum durability in the upper, it's the Adidas Soul Court Boost all the way. Now coming into the outsole durability test, 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper on the Dremel, we got one millimeter of damage to the outsole. That is just as good as any of the other durability focused tennis shoes out there with the six month durability guarantee. So in the comments section, I've actually seen some people complain about the arch support and the Adidas Soul Court Boost being too substantial, that it's kind of hard to break in. Now, the reason for that is, as you can see, here's the shank of the shoe but also that rubber shank on the outside that looks real flimsy on the bottom, it gets really thick as it comes up to the arch to hold your arch up. So now you got rigid shank, then you have that increasing thickness of rubber coming up over your arch. That's why the arch support on these shoes is so substantial and so solid. I have heard some people say that they think that the boost material could potentially fray from the outsole and maybe the midsole. Now I have been trying to pry it open with my hands and it hasn't come open. Uh, I've also been using some instruments. Now if I can get a small instrument underneath of it, I can kind of try to pry it open, but it's just, it's not coming open. So if someone's had that problem, it may have been a defect in the batch of the shoe. But as far as I can see, that boost foam is in there pretty good. So there's only one more thing left to do with the Adidas Soul Court Boost, and that is to compare it to the Asics Court FF2. That video is gonna be coming out soon. I think that these two shoes are probably the most stable two shoes on the market right now, and I'd like to put them head to head to see which shoe is better for you. So if you don't wanna miss that video, make sure to click the subscribe button and notification bell. That way you can get notified when this video comes out. Hope everyone has a great day, great night, wherever you're tuning in from. And until the next shoe, see you next time.